today we'll discuss about sars covid variant xec so what is sars covid xec variant so this is a new sublineage of omicron and it is a recombinant of 2jn.1 descendants kp3.3 and ks1.1 so this virus uh, this uh, sublineage has the several mutations in the spike protein uh, including these mutations and we need to understand that spike protein is a protein which is uh, by which the virus gets attached to the human cell and then uh, the genome is uh, incorporated into the human cell this xcc variant was first identified in germany in early august 2024 uh, since then uh, it has been steadily increasing in the other parts of the world basically uh, it has been identified in the european nations uh, including at least 29 countries and uh, in us it has been identified uh, in 24 states this chart shows the increase in the prevalence of xcc in the recent few months like in the 34 uh, 34th week of 2024 the xcc variant contributed only 2% of the uh, prevalence whereas uh, by the week 37 the prevalence has increased from 2 to 4.8 so this shows there's that there's a rapid increase in the xcc variant and it has taken over many other variants and uh, so it's a big concern uh, for the public health professionals so because of this rapid increase in the various parts of the world including us and the european countries uh, this variant xcc is currently uh, included by who in the circulating variant under monitoring so this is also an important step by the who to monitor the this virus so why why is xcc different from the other recent covid strains basically this is a recombinant strain strain of the two sublineages of omicron like kp3.3 and ks1.1 so is it's a recombinant strain it has got multiple mutations and because of that it is a concern for the it's it's a concern because uh, because of these recombination it might have some new changes which might lead to its increase in the infectivity or because of that uh, it's a big concern right now and it's uh, rapidly increasing in the various parts of the world so it's a big concern right now similarly uh, because of this recombination it has uh, mutations in the spike protein so uh, it is uh, suspected that because of uh, there is few mutations in the spike protein uh, which are responsible for the increase in the infectivity of these xcc variant so increase in the infectivity uh, is also one concern and that's why it's different from the recently circulating covid strains so why do we need to worry we need to worry because uh, as we can see from this chart that in the mid october uh, prevalence of uh, covid xcc was a uh, 10.7% of all the covid infections in the us that is like uh, it's the second most prevalent strain in the us right now uh, and the, but the most common strain uh, till now is kp3.1.1 which accounts for 57.2% but this xcc is rapidly rising and uh, by mid october it was prevalent in 10.7% of the detected cases so that is a concern similarly because of the mutation in the spike protein and this uh, the recent variant is thought to have the high contagious potential moreover uh, because of this infectivity and the way it is increasing very fast uh, it is suspected that it is likely to become the world's predominant SARS-CoV-2 variant in the near future so that's why it's a big concern and most of the health authorities are worried about it so as we have mentioned this increase in infectivity is thought to be because of the mutation in the spike proteins and the next big concern is whether the available vaccines for the uh, recent covid strains act against this new xcc variant or not because this is a mutated version of the recent covid variant so uh, there's still uncertainty whether these vaccines will uh, work for this new variant so that's also a big concern how does the symptoms of xcc differ from the other covid variants actually there's no evidence that the xcc causes the different symptoms so the symptoms are similar to the other covid variants uh, like the common symptoms include fever cough tiredness loss of smell similarly less severe symptoms include sore throat headache body ache diarrhea rashes or sometimes the severe symptoms might include the pneumonia shortness of breath difficulty breathing 
a loss of uh, speech or mobility or confusion, chest pain. So those are some severe uh, symptoms. The basic uh, major concern is those older people and the immunocompromised because um, they are always likely to develop the severe COVID infection irrespective of the variants involved in the infection. So is treatment uh, different for the XCC? That's also a big question because uh, as the COVID is a virus and the treatment is basically supportive. So treatment for this XCC variant is not that different from the other variants of the COVID. So the treatment is a supportive and in certain cases we might need to use some antiviral agents like Paxlovid or sometimes in the severe cases patient might require remdesivir or the other monoclonal antibodies or the steroids as well. So the treatment is basically similar to the other previous variants. So one big question is whether these updated COVID-19 vaccines which were recently updated for 24-25 uh, they protect against XCC or not. So it's very, uh, it's still impossible to guarantee that 100% of the, now uh, there'll be the 100% match between a vaccine and the circulating variant uh, when a virus is constantly mutating. Uh, but it's believed that these newly updated Pfizer and Moderna mRNA vaccines, which are designed to target this KP.2 and J and dot one strains, might be able to work against these XGC variant. So scientists are optimistic about that. So what are the steps that a person can take to avoid an XGC infection? So basically, everyone should get the recommended vaccinations, including the boosters or additional doses. And if there's any suspicion of infection with the new COVID strain, they should get themselves tested. And if the COVID is diagnosed, they should take the medications according to the uh, health practitioner's advice. And like other variants, they can uh, they need to wash their hands, cover uh, a cough or sneeze, wear mask in the public places or well, uh, whenever in the enclosed spaces. And other than that, like keeping a distance from the infected people, staying at home when you are sick, and getting help from the healthcare professionals when necessary, uh, can help to reduce the spread of this new variant. So thank you so much for watching our video. If you have any queries and questions regarding this XCC variant of COVID, then please let us know in the comment box.